All right, so here's some materials that I picked up at uh, Home Depot. Uh, I can show you the skews, maybe, if they show up. They probably won't. But, uh, so, there's this uh, laminated pine. 17 and, uh, was it 17 and a quarter by 48. So, this is going to be the back, the back of the board. And then I got this stuff here. This is uh, 11 and a quarter by 36. Um, it wasn't very expensive. Uh, and this is going to be for the sides. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I got two of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double them up. So I'm going to put this here. I'm going to cut it out. And uh, I'm going to cut four of them out. So I'll put two of them side by side. And I'll drill through one one of the two on the sides and I'll use that to put the dowels through and then I'll have a flat one for the for the side so this will be the outside where you see it and then there'll be another one glued right to it that's gonna have the holes for the dowels and then I'll do the same thing on the other side um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut out two of these and I'm gonna screw them together on the corners so when I cut it out with the bandsaw, I'll get two exact ones at a time. And uh, by putting the screws in the corners, I don't have to worry about damage in the center section here. Um, so for the dowels, I got three quarter dowels. Uh, what do I get? One, two, three, four, five. I got six of them. I might not need six. Uh, so I just got one extra just in case. Um, so when I cut this out, I took I took a set of the ears that my wife had, and uh, I, they're all kind of different. And you'll see what, if you put them all together, they're all none of them are exactly the same. They're all kind of some will be he, the ears will be in different areas. So basically, what I did was I measured the biggest ones, and they were about four inches in diameter on the ears. So I went with a five inch diameter for the outside so if you look at it from the side you, you won't see things sticking out here or there um, some of them the ears were down here some they were up here and the one that I did obviously I, I had perfectly centered um, <clears throat> where you put your dowels also will make a difference because if you spread the uh, the headband section it will change the way these ears are though the, if you spread it open then it will close them at the top so it all depends on how how big you put the uh, the set of dowels in here too? So when I when I put the ears on here, I tra I traced the the inside of the band when it was relaxed, and then I opened them up a little bit, and then I retraced it again with them opened a little bit. Uh, you don't want to have the have the the dowels all around the outside. It'll look better but it's going to stretch the headband out because if you have it on there for a long period of time I think it's going to keep them stretched wide so when you go to put them on it's not going to come back small anymore so basically I just I traced them relaxed and then I just opened them up a little bit and then I traced them again so I'm just going to put the dowels the outside of the dowels are going to come down just like this right along the edge so it it um So it, it'll be, there'll be like one here right on the edge. So it's not, not holding it wide open. Cause if it's over here, you're going to see, I mean, it'll look better with them around the outside, but you're going to stretch the headband out pretty, pretty bad. So I'll probably use five and I'll do like one there, one there, and then three, four, and then five up at the top. So anyway, so I'll drill all my holes just right on the edge of that so that they all sit on there just just a little, little bit of tension so it keeps them from falling off not that I think that they would fall off but I mean I'll I'll kind of fine-tune it before I actually drill the holes but that that's basically my the, the, the reasoning behind why I'm doing it the way I'm doing it so I went with the five inch diameter for the ears and then I, I seen online that uh, the formula for the ears in the head are the ears are 60% the size of the head so I got the five inches for the ears. I divided it by 60 and then I multiplied it by a hundred and I got 8.33. So basically eight and a quarter 
inches the diameter of the big section so I had the ears I found the center and I drew a line straight down and then I I put my compass right on the center here and I, I just went up right to the, the top of the line so this is the inside of the headband and then the top of the headband will be about there and I just I would think I went like what an eighth of an inch taller than the top of the headband and then I just I set it there and then I made my circle there so that's uh that's how I got the template in case you're wondering so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to cut out uh, what are these? This piece of paper was a 12 by 12 piece of paper. So you, just so you know. So it was at 11, 11 and a half. So I'll cut out a couple more 11 and a half pieces, or I might just cut it in half. It doesn't matter too much. But that will be, um, that'll actually be about 13. So let's see, this is 36. So half of that is 18, so I could probably go, I will cut out 14, so I got a little extra. Um, so that's what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut out, I'm going to cut out four of these at 14 inches long. And uh, we'll get some screws and we'll screw them together, and then we'll start cutting them out. So we got our two pieces. Is that? So the section will do the same thing. It's not a big deal that it's 14 because it's all going to get cut out anyway. It's just a general size. Is that? Now we have uh, a four pieces. I should be able to just put the screws in the corners. And there. And there. So I just have some regular screws. Uh, I'm going to pre drill them so it doesn't split. And then I'll, I'll put these in.
we'll take our template and we will trace it out. Is too. So I want to keep this so I can put the swivel later and uh, drill my holes for the dowels. So while we're here, um, the spot that mine is going to fit in is 30 inches wide. So I'm going to cut this piece down to 30 inches. Now, while I have the saw and everything set up, that way I could take this off and set it aside and uh, have room for the, the bandsaw. What is that? So, I'm going to take this and set it aside. Alright, so I'm going to use this bandsaw. Um, I don't really know what size it is. Uh, I don't know. It doesn't say what size it is, but it's not really a giant deal. But you can use, you can use a coping saw. You can use uh, these other methods. Um, you can rough cut it out and use like a like a drum, drum sander. Uh, I've used one of those. It was actually kind of take a lot of wood off real quick. Um, yeah, like I say, you use a coping saw. Really, I mean whatever whatever form that you could think of that you have access to the, the tooling for. Uh, I'm gonna use the band saw just because I have it, and. Uh, and we'll cut this out. So, here's the finished product. Um, I think if I were to do it again, I would probably kind of make this uh, kind of like a, not not a hard corner like that, but like a, kind of like just a, you know, a swooping one or whatever you want to call it. But instead of coming in hard there, kind of making it a taper, not taper, but now a smoother transition. 
don't know what the word is for it. But anyway, so that's that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the one that's going to be my inside one. And I'm going to clamp it to the other one. See, these, these are kind of matched to themselves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take like this side and the same thing on the inside of the other one. And I'm going to take them off, put them together, and I'm going to drill my holes through for the, uh, the dowels. And then I'll put these back with the ones they came with and I'll, I'll sand them so they're all flush with each other and uh, smooth. And we can get like the kind of like the, the blade marks out of there. Okay, so I'm using a, a Forstner bit. They, they kind of cut a hole as they go. So I got my lines here. I'm going to do one in the center here. It's going to be circular underneath this line so it'll be one there and then one here at this line I drew straight across and then this an even distance down I do another one so I'll do another one here and another one there so I'll have five five dowels in there and uh, I'll drill these all the way through because it's going to be the two inside pieces and then um, and then I'll match them back up to the originals and sand all the edges down Be careful when you're pushing down that you don't push too hard because you can blow the the back of it as it gets thinner. It'll it'll just kind of tear it out. So. Take a piece of the scrap wood and I'm gonna stick that under it. So as it goes through, it'll push in and it'll cut into this, and it won't kind of tear out the back side of the hole. See, so now the holes pretty smooth there. Otherwise, it can once it it get it kind of cuts through a little bit, and then it'll just push it through, and it'll it'll just open it up and kind of ruin it. So, is one. So what I'm doing is a little point on here. I'm lining the point up on that line and I'm getting the edge on the edge of this. That doesn't have to be perfect, but the closer the better. I'm sure it, all the bands, all the headbands are kind of different. So it's, they're not, they're not like all exactly the same size. So it's, you just kind of, Got to get it close, I'm guessing. That's what I meant, that one kind of tore out a little bit. Here we go. So 
So, there's the holes. All right, so I'm gonna glue these all back together, or glue these together. I'll clean the sawdust off them. Wipe them all down. Is that? I don't have any rhyme or reason for the way I'm doing it. I'm just kind of going around. So I kind of spread it out. You could do okay. This one on this one. Make sure you're the, they're the matched ones. This one on this one. So we could probably use these scrap pieces to aid in the compression. Is how I got it clamped up. So they were all in there. So probably it's better to use the the scrap pieces because then when it leaves little divots and stuff from the clamps, it won't be in the piece that you want. So. So our glue's all dry. We'll uh, take the clamps off. Here's the finished pieces. We have two. So now we'll uh, we'll sand them all so they kind of match to each other, and all the all the edges are flush. And uh, then we'll paint them. Um, I might take a router and round over the edge so it's oh it's got a. It's got a square edge to it, so I might take a router and run around it with a router to, to just kind of round the edge over. And uh, then we'll paint it. So, let's do that. There's a bunch of different ways that you can sand this. Um, 
You can just use regular sandpaper. Uh, you can use a wood file. I don't believe this is actually a wood file, but I'm going to use this to get like in the uh, in the corners there to kind of smooth the corners down. Um, you can use a belt sander or most forms of sander. So I'll probably I'll probably use this for some of the the sides. So I'll run around just to kind of do a quick quick around the sides. Um, so I'll probably clamp this to the table with these clamps so it doesn't move. If I move it in to, uh, to like the middle of the table, then I can kind of run around it and it, it makes like a 90 degree angle so it, it'll kind of work like a, like a, uh, well, I don't know, it'll kind of work like what, anyway, so if you clamp this down, you can get flush right up to it and then then it'll be like I say a 90 degree angle you don't have to worry about it kind of sanding one way or the other it'll be straight flat uh, if you wanted to you don't have to use the thinner material you could use uh, you could use like a 2x4 or something thicker or a 2x12 and then you would get your thicker section so you don't have you can just skip this part by using a thicker piece uh, you don't have to make it thicker if you don't want to. You can have the dowels just stick through so you'll, you'll see the end of the dowel and you can smooth that, sand that flat too. So it's up, up to you on what you want your finished product to look like, but this is just the way that I'm doing it. So there's easier ways to do it than the way that I'm doing it is what I'm saying. So I'll leave this up so it, uh, so it gets on in the center of the belt so it's not on the edge because the belt doesn't go all the way to the edge so I need something to lift the piece up just gotta plug it in see how we're nice smooth there so I couldn't get in these little areas here so that's why I need the, the file to, uh, to clean up this corner and then these this corner here I'm gonna use uh, it's it's a little belt sander it's a uh, I think it's called a belt file um, so it's only a half inch wide belt is what I'm gonna use for these it just it just does it quicker like you can use regular sandpaper but you it'll probably take a little while um, all these tools I'm using are from Harbor Freight. They're, I don't do a lot of woodworking, so I don't buy really expensive woodworking tools. But, like I say, these, these are all from Harbor Freight. I think that belt sander was maybe like $10-$15. Uh, so, the stuff, it works. So, it, it's all on just how much effort you want to put in there and, and, and what you want to do. Um, so, I say I got this basically basically done. I could probably do a little more there uh, just to smooth it out because it's not exactly flush and there's some some marks from the, the the bandsaw blade in there. So I'll probably clean this little piece up a little bit some more maybe a little bit in here and then uh, we'll get the edges here and then I'll be done with one and I'll do the other one and uh, then we can proceed with the build. So this is the other 
tool I have. Like I say, it's pretty much kind of like a grinder, but it's got a little half inch uh, belt on it. So this, this ought to get like in there pretty good. And then the edges here and uh, probably in there. I'm gonna see if I can get away with not having to use the file for the corners and we'll, we'll try it with this. Um, like I said, if I had to do it again, I would probably just make this like a smooth arch in there. Maybe like a little arch right here instead of the hard corner because it'd be easier to sand and, and to clean up if it was just kind of like a like a smooth taper in there. So if I had to do it again, like I say, that's that's how I would do it. I would just round these corners over. So, let's see, sand it in there pretty good. It's quicker than hand sanding, so that's why I uh, went with that. It got in there pretty good too. You just gotta keep it moving so you don't kind of burn into it. Um, yep. All right, so I'm gonna use the router to round over the edge of, uh, of all this. Um, these are what the bits look like. You see they got kind of a rounded edge with a little bearing on them. Um, so they do a pretty good job of, you know, just kind of putting a round, rounded edge on it. So it's just going to be a little bit. It's not going to be anything uh, too significant. It, you, you can do that with sandpaper or a file or, or um, any of the other sanding methods. Uh, it's a little harder than doing it with the... The router, the router's pretty fast, but obviously it's a specialized tool, so it's up to you on whether or not that's what you want, uh, or how you want to do it. So I would recommend safety glasses because this one does kind of does kind of project the material as you're going through, and you got to kind of be close to see what you're doing. So I mean, you want to wear safety glasses with all this stuff. But with the router, I would definitely recommend wearing safety glasses. So I got this board clamped to the table and this just with a spring clamp holding it down so I can, because you got to kind of push into it a little bit. So I want to be able to get around without that big clamp and I don't want to mar up the surface either with that clamp. So that's another reason I'm using this. So that's one side. So it puts a little bit of a rounded edge on there. Um, so we'll do the other side, and then uh, then we'll be done with the with the end, end caps. So. 
co? It's not a necessary feature, but I think it makes it look a little bit better. Kind of dresses it up a little bit. I might take some sandpaper and just kind of get that edge off where the where the line is right there. And uh, just do like a quick quick once over on the edge just to kind of soften it. And uh, then we'll continue on. So I'm gonna cut the dowels out. Uh, so I use like this as a spacer, just to, so I can get my spacing from the edge. So get one from the edge there. I'll take the other one. Do the same thing over here. Then we'll take a tape measure and we'll measure the middle of these where the where the the, the uh, where the depth of the hole is. So anyway, so the hole is only only goes halfway through because we sandwich two pieces together. So we'll take that and we'll measure like I say from the middle of this one. This one. I've got twenty seven and an eighth. So I'll cut all all my dowels twenty seven and one eighth. And um and then we'll be able to Obviously, have our, our dowels made. Um, then I'll paint everything once I have the dowels all cut. So I'm going to paint the dowels and we're going to paint obviously these and then the backboard. So let me get a saw and uh, we'll cut the dowels. All right, so I'm going to take all these dowels and I'm going to measure 27 and 1 8 make a mark and then we'll cut them with the hacksaw. Right, best to double check. go nice and easy because you don't want to sp split it because when you get down when you get to like halfway through if you push too hard it'll just it'll just break it off and it can tear along the edge so what I was doing was as I was cutting I was rotating this a little bit so I was cutting in a little bit maybe like a half a blade all the way around and then once I got back to where I started I went all the way through so that way if it broke it would just kind of tear in the center a little bit and it wouldn't break ruin the outside of the dowel.
Okay, so we're going to assemble these with the dowels in them. Now they're all painted and dry. Take a scrap piece and get my thing centered from the edge. I'm going to use this and I'm going to set my Mickey's right at the top or Make sure they're even. Reached over, centered. Let me show you what I was talking about. So that's how I have that set up. So I know that they're at the same height. So now what I'll do is I'll find right here where it, it where it comes down, where it touches in the center, and I'll measure down from the top to here, and then I'll measure from here in, and then I'll have where I'm going to put my screw because I'm going to run a screw from the back side through into the Mickey ear. Here are the screws I have, and they're going to come in on the back side, like so, right there. So that's how I'm going to find where that hole is going to be, and then I'm going to drill a pilot hole into it, and then I'm going to realign this, and then put the screw in. The same thing on the other side at the top, and then at the bottom I'll be able to just drill and put the screw in. Once I measure down and over. I'm going down two and five eighths and in let's see, one and three eighths. So two and five eighths and one and three eighths. Should be the same on both sides. This. So we're going to go down two and five eighths. And over one and three eighths.
I will drill through from the back. That one started. Okay, this one started. We'll take it. Put our Mickey's back on. Try to use my gauge to center it side to side. You can measure if you want, but I find it a little easier with this. Alright, so we should be good. So I'll come from underneath and I will put those screws into the top ear of the Mickey. So there is one screw. I'm going to take this, flip it up. I'm going to do the same thing to find our bottom screw. It should be the same one and three eighths over. It's just the length we're going to have to measure for. This one's going to be seven. So we're one and three eighths in and seven down. Should be the same over here. Right. I did not measure that right. It was seven and a half. Okay, I measured over there. That would have been close. I mean. I could have just re-drilled another hole, it wouldn't have been a huge deal, but it's always better to measure twice. So 
I'm gonna drill a little farther into this because with the two screws, if they're right on the same line, then they can split this. Um, just to kind of take a little bit out. Make sure this is pushed together. Is that so now we've got a Mickey's on. So I've got one more little bit I'm going to include, and uh, that's gonna be some hooks. I'm gonna put some coat hooks on because everybody with Mickey ears. Owns a Mickey bag, I'm guessing. So you can hang your ears up here, and then you can hang your bags on the front. So with this one, I've got enough. I've got enough space to uh, hang three bags. You might be able to squeeze four on, but they get kind of crowded. So all this wood and the paint and the dowels and pretty much all the supplies, you can get everything from Home Depot. You can probably get hooks too from Home Depot. We got these from Walmart because Walmart is closer than Home Depot. So, what we'll do is we will get a straight head or a straight line so we got them all at the same height. And let's see, we're going to want one right in the middle to start. which is going to be 15 inches, I believe, because I think I want 30. It's 30, so we're going to go 15 inches is going to be the middle. And I don't know if it really matters exactly where you put it on the height. I guess wherever you want it to be. Um, better is that right there maybe Not for me um, let's see I'm gonna try the same same screw size that I used initially for the pilot holes, which is 564.
Now you might not have to put pilot holes in here, but if you don't and it splits, well, that's a lot of work to have it split at the end. Hold that down. this up so when I drill through I don't drill into my table. Now you're going to want to make sure you get screws that don't go through and then all the way through the the board because then it's going to poke it in your wall. These are right there. So I think if I think if I use my little thing here, I might be able to grind the tips down a little bit. That might not be that big of a deal. I'll put them in and see, see what it looks like. probably take uh, my file or something and file that down so they don't stick through so there's that so 15 here so I'll put one probably seven and a half and then seven and a half and that'll be centered um, right in there So that's a finished project. Uh, it's not too too difficult. Uh, take a little, well, a little, uh, few different tools or something. I mean, it's not nothing you can't do with regular tools. You don't need the exact ones that I used. You can use screwdrivers or or whatever you whatever you have on hand, and uh, you probably get a similar result. It's all on how much effort you want to put into it. So. I thank you for watching and have a nice day.